Hey everyone, today we're diving into the amazing world of the ocean from the sunny surface to the deepest parts. It's full of incredible creatures. But here's the thing, it's not just a random mix of animals. They all depend on each other in a kind of delicate dance of life. We call this dance symbiosis which means two different species living and interacting together. Sometimes both species benefit like a win-win situation. We call this mutualism. Other times one species benefits and the other one doesn't really care. That's called commensalism. So come on, let's explore the ocean and uncover the secrets of these amazing relationships. And guess what? What happens in the ocean affects us all. First stop, a coral reef. This underwater world is a bustling metropolis, teeming with life and activity. It's a place where cooperation is key to survival. It's like a busy city bursting with life. Every creature has a role to play, from the tiniest shrimp to the largest fish. Look, a small, colorful fish called a cleaner wrasse is sending out a signal. This signal is a call for cooperation, inviting other fish to come closer. Bigger fish, even the ones who usually eat other fish, come closer with their mouths wide open. They trust the cleaner wrasse to help them. They need the cleaner wrasse's special skill parasite removal. This tiny fish is like a doctor, providing a crucial service. This little fish dives in and out of the big fish's mouths, cleaning up parasites, dead skin and even wounds. It's a delicate and dangerous job, but the cleaner wrasse is an expert. It's a win-win. The cleaner wrasse gets a meal, and the bigger fish get a cleaning. This mutualistic relationship benefits both parties. Fish with their own personal cleaners are healthier, less stressed, and even grow bigger. This shows how cooperation can lead to better health and growth. But hold on. Some sneaky fish pretend to be cleaner wrasses. These imposters take advantage of the trust built in this cooperative system. They trick the bigger fish and take a bite out of them instead. This deception shows that even in a world built on cooperation, there are always those looking to exploit the system. Despite these challenges, the coral reef remains a vibrant example of how cooperation and mutual benefit can create a thriving community. It's a delicate balance, but one that has sustained these underwater cities for millions of years. Now let's go deeper into the coral reef, a vibrant and bustling underwater metropolis teeming with life. Did you know that tiny animals called coral polyps build these amazing underwater cities? These minuscule architects work tirelessly, secreting calcium carbonate to form the hard, protective skeletons that make up the reef. But they couldn't do it alone. The coral polyps rely on a remarkable partnership to thrive in the nutrient-poor waters of the ocean. They have a secret weapon microscopic algae called zooxanthella. These tiny algae live inside the coral's tissues, forming a symbiotic relationship that benefits both parties. These tiny plants live inside the coral and can turn sunlight into food, just like plants on land. Through the process of photosynthesis, the zooxanthellae convert sunlight into energy, producing oxygen and organic compounds that the coral polyps can use. The coral gives the algae a safe place to live and the stuff they need to make food. In return, the algae provide the coral with essential nutrients, enabling them to grow and build the reef structure. In return, the algae give the coral the energy it needs to grow and build the reef. This mutualistic relationship is the cornerstone of the reef's success, allowing it to flourish and support a diverse array of marine life. But here's the problem. Our planet is getting warmer, and that's bad news for coral. Rising ocean temperatures disrupt this delicate balance, putting immense stress on the coral and its symbiotic algae. The hot water stresses out the algae and the coral has to kick them out. Without their algae partners, the coral loses its main source of food and energy, leading to a weakened state. This leaves the coral weak and white, a process called coral bleaching. If the stressful conditions persist, the coral may eventually die, leading to the collapse of the entire reef ecosystem. It's a stark reminder of the fragility of these underwater wonders and the urgent need to protect our planet's climate. Let's leave the sunny coral reefs and plunge into the deep, dark ocean. Here, the environment is vastly different from the vibrant, sunlit world above. It's super dark and the pressure is intense down here, almost crushing. 
The temperature can be near freezing and the landscape is eerie and alien. But guess what? There's still life. Despite the harsh conditions, a variety of unique creatures have adapted to survive in this extreme environment. Around cracks in the ocean floor called hydrothermal vents, hot water full of minerals shoots up. These vents are like underwater geysers, releasing a cocktail of chemicals into the surrounding water. And around these vents we find giant tube worms. These fascinating creatures thrive in the mineral-rich waters. They can grow taller than a person. Imagine walking through a forest of these towering worms. These strange creatures don't have mouths or stomachs, which makes you wonder how they get their nutrients and they can't use sunlight for energy. In the pitch black depth, sunlight is a luxury that doesn't exist. So how do they survive? What is their secret to thriving in such an inhospitable place? They have tiny friends called chemosynthetic bacteria. These bacteria are the unsung heroes of the deep sea. These bacteria live inside the tube worms, forming a symbiotic relationship that benefits both parties and can do something amazing. They turn the chemicals from the vents into food. It's like magic. This process is known as chemosynthesis. This process is called chemosynthesis, a remarkable method of converting inorganic molecules into organic matter. And it proves that life can exist even without sunlight. The deep sea is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of life thriving in places we once thought impossible. Next stop, the open ocean. It's like a giant desert and finding food is tough, but don't worry, the remora, also known as the sucker fish, has figured it out. This clever fish has a suction cup on its head that lets it stick to bigger animals like sharks, rays and even whales. Talk about a free ride, this saves the remora energy, helps it find food and keeps it safe from predators. And the shark? It doesn't really care. It just keeps swimming with the remora attached. Our journey into commensalism continues with barnacles and whales. Barnacles are like tiny crabs and lobsters, but instead of moving around, they attach themselves to things. And what better place to live than on a whale? Using super strong glue, barnacles stick themselves to whales and turn them into living ships. The whale swims through the ocean, taking the barnacles to new places to find food. The barnacles are happy and the whale doesn't even notice them. Things are about to get a little creepy as we explore the world of parasites, where one species benefits by harming another. Deep in the ocean, a small creature called an isopod has a dark secret. Isopods are related to crabs and lobsters, but they've become parasites, which means they need to live on other animals to survive. They use their sharp claws to grab onto fish, attaching themselves to their gills, skin, or even their mouths. Then they feed on the fish's blood and body, which can make the fish sick and weak. Our journey into the world of parasites continues with copepods, tiny creatures that are everywhere in the ocean. While some copepods are harmless, others are parasites that live on fish. They use their sharp mouths to pierce the fish's skin and suck their blood. Having too many copepods can be a big problem for fish, making them weak and sick. We've seen so many amazing creatures on our journey, and one thing is clear. Symbiotic relationships are super important for the ocean. They help create a diverse and healthy ocean by allowing different species to live together. These relationships also make sure that energy and nutrients are shared in the ocean, kind of like a giant food chain. Without symbiosis, the ocean wouldn't be the same. Sadly, humans are causing problems for the ocean and its delicate balance. Pollution, overfishing and climate change are all hurting marine life and their symbiotic relationships. Pollution from things like trash and chemicals is making the ocean a dangerous place to live. Overfishing is taking too many fish out of the ocean which disrupts the food chain. And climate change is making the ocean warmer and more acidic which is bad news for everyone. But don't worry, there's still hope. We can all do our part to protect the ocean. Creating special areas where fishing and other activities are not allowed can give marine life a chance to recover. We can also fish in a way that doesn't harm the ocean and reduce the amount of pollution we create. And by using less energy and fighting climate change, we can help keep the ocean healthy. As we finish our journey, it's clear that the ocean is an amazing place full of incredible relationships. 
From the tiniest creatures to the largest whales, everything is connected. It's our job to protect the ocean and all its wonders so that future generations can enjoy it too. By understanding and appreciating the ocean, we can all make a difference. Let's work together to keep the ocean healthy and full of life.